Hey everybody, got an opportunity to do a tag video, haven't done one in a while, so I was really excited when Angela from the Literature Science Alliance tagged me in this tag, which is in for novella. A couple of these were a little bit hard for me to figure out, and I wanted to kind of give um, my best answer, but I cheated a little bit and did two movies for some of these, just because I didn't have the best answers, but I felt like with these two movies they kind of summed up what we had there. Question one, what is a novella you've read recently? So for me, I don't read a lot of novellas. So the last one that I read was Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. It was very good. It made me cry. I think it won some awards. The premise of the story is this young lady uses some magic to try to um, restore the uh, emperor's mind after he um, had some brain damage. And it's neat the way that the magic worked and um, it's kind of like a stamp magic. It's loosely connected to the Elantris world I think this group of people is on the far side of the planet, not exactly where Elantris is, but kind of same planet, but different places. Question number two, a book that focuses on neighbors. Now, until I read this, this book, The Gladiator, I didn't have a good answer for that. This is based on an Italian family living in communism, where an alternate timeline, the Soviet Union won the Cold War. And so everybody is communist. They live in the communist regime, and in their apartment, they share a bathroom and a kitchen. So these two neighbors are very closely related. The main characters in the book are the daughter, who's 17, and the son of the other family, the neighboring family, who is 16. And they go through their day-to-day -day life learning about board games that teach capitalism. And, you know, secret police get involved, all kinds of craziness. So the book's really about the characters. And it was very short, but it was neat, the interactions between the two and how much they were afraid of the secret police and um, talking about what they could say, what they couldn't say, um, how capitalism could be a good thing, but also not always the, the best option. So it was a really neat, um, interesting perspective and um, definitely dealt with neighbors. So the third question is N is for name, which is um, the first name or the last name starts with N. So I've got Neil Gaiman, uh, American Gods very good if you haven't checked it out. The cool thing about American Gods is that it is the kind of story where you could probably go back to it very, very easily. This is a cool copy that I picked up from Barnes & Noble. It also has Insancy Boys in it. Mostly when you talk about American Gods, it's about Shadow and his journey meeting old gods and how, how the gods used to feed off of our worship and how we, don't, we no longer worship them and new gods are rising up and they are fighting for our worship and the ensuing battle that comes from that. Question number four is N is for nuptials, so a book about a wedding or a marriage or something like that. So I don't have it with me, I'll let my mom borrow it, so I'll put it over here somewhere. Um, Wildcat by J.P. Harker, the main character is a political bride and it, all of her struggle with wanting to be married for love, wanting to be a good dutiful daughter, and um, you know, protect her people. One of the coolest romance things that I've found that I really enjoy lately is a very good arranged marriage where two people come together for duty or purpose or political reasons and then they grow to love one another. I've, I've found that to be a really cool um, way for love and, and how love forms from a responsibility to one another and not from a infatuation. And I think that's really cool. I think some authors can do that really well. Some authors do not. And the ones that have done it well, like I believe J.P. Harper did, um, can really make, make you feel something for the idea of you're rooting for them to fall in love, even though, you know, they just have like a mutual respect for one another. Um, there's an instance of that in the Lightbringer series, which I love as well. Question five is N for not aging well. And the only book I could think of was To Kill a Mockingbird. But the more I thought about it, I said no. I don't think um, the themes in that book, I didn't really get into it. It was not one that um, I got about 45 pages in or so. And I, I put it down. I'll get back to it eventually, but I just had a hard time. Uh, wasn't connecting with the characters at the time. But um, wanted to do, this is one of my cheats. It's going to be a movie. And we just watched this with the kids. We borrowed it at the library. It was Kiss Them For Me. It had Cary Grant in it and Jane Mansfield. And man, just the way that they talk to women in it, the way that um, just the boisterous nature, I just, I, me and my wife looked at each other and went, man, 
they this was bad um just overall um it did not age well at all um it's not even a good movie uh yeah that's all i'd say about that but something i consumed recently that did not age well is kiss them for me i'll put a picture up so question number six is n is for number of n's in the book title so i looked and looked and looked i thought i was going to go with alice in wonderland because you have three in here you have one two three and then i had through the looking glass as well and it actually doesn't add through the looking glass has no ends in it so it doesn't add but and then there were none has four so haven't read this yet but i loved murder on the orient express i'm hoping to get this one i don't actually know what it's about but she does great mysteries and i'm really excited to get back into agatha christie again so i will pick this up very soon question seven is n is for not sure and it's really asking for a book that you're not sure if you really want to read I bought this one the other day, and it's The Odyssey by Homer. And I know the story, but I've never read it. I've, you know, through schooling and through movies and things like that, I've, I've heard the story. I know about the Cyclops. I know about um, Achilles. I know about Troy. I know about the war. I know about the Trojan horse. I know, uh, I know the story. I know about the sirens. I know about Ulysses trying to get home. I've heard songs written about it. I've, you know, so many things about this book that I know. But do I want to read it? I don't know. I might. But I'm nervous about it. I, do, I don't plan to read it soon. But this was a pretty copy, so I picked it up. Question eight is for nitpick. Um, something that you nitpick about on books. And for me, it's graphic sex scenes. If I wanted to pick up erotica, I would. But I didn't. I picked up a fantasy story or a sci-fi story. And if you want to talk about sex in the story, that's fine, but please don't describe it for me. I understand that when they go into the bedroom, they start kissing, and then we go to the next scene, that's what happened there. And I don't need that. I may be in a small minority, but I, I do not need graphic sex scenes in literature that I'm trying to enjoy. If I really wanted to read that kind of stuff, I would on my own time, not when I'm trying to read a story that I'm trying to get the plot and the characters and all that kind of stuff. So I feel it's unnecessary. Sometimes I even feel like when it's done poorly, it's like, oh man, I don't know what to put here, so I'm gonna put a sex scene in. And I've seen that a lot in movies and TV shows. Um, Spartacus was a really good example of that. Great show, but all of a sudden they just decided that they needed to throw boobs in it. They were like, oh, um, they're fighting and they're doing all this and the story's good and the actors are good. Oh, boobs. And I, and I don't always just want that, you know? I, personally, most of the time I could, I could leave it. Some people want it more than others. I mean, Game of Thrones was, kind of on the hairy edge for me. It, it was a little bit more than I liked, but the story was good. So, you know, kind of a warring issue there. Number nine is Anne is for next to nothing. So I'm going to do fables on this one. I remember enjoying it. I remember kind of the idea, but I remember nothing of the plot. And I'm going to reread it so I can review it on the channel for an Animation Station uh, episode. Um, and I, I just, I did not remember anything about this. Um, Really, I only remember the parts that I played in A Wolf Among Us, the video game, which was really good. But I don't remember how closely that was to the book, to the to the graphic novel. So, um, want to read that again just to fresh up on it. Uh, I bought the second one because I enjoyed it so much, and I haven't read the second one yet either. So maybe I'll try to read them both. Uh, you can fly through a graphic novel pretty quick. Number ten is for New Zealand. Um, I've never read anything from a New Zealand author. So I looked up a couple of them, and I came up with Maurice Shadbolt. I'll put his picture right here. Um, he wrote Season of the Jew or Monday Warriors, and at the time, he was the best-selling author from New Zealand to ever sell that many books. So, kind of cool. Um, a movie, if you haven't watched it, great movie that came out of New Zealand, directors New Z from New Zealand, and it's set in New Zealand, is Hunt for the Wilder People by Taika Waititi. Um, hilarious, heartwarming, great story. Really, really cool. Number 11 is N is for nodding off. For me, this was Annihilation. I got so bored reading it. I was like, I really want to understand this story. I thought the story was cool. I put it down. And then I listened to it on audiobook, and even the audiobook narrator sounded bored. And it was like, man, I just never connected to the story. I Every part of it should have been exciting for me. And for some reason, I just never connected at all with any of the characters in Annihilation. That was done by Jeff Vandermeer. 
Um, basically, there's a um, event that happens, kind of the, the world is being biomorphed into something new, and they go in to investigate. Number 12 is next on my list. Right now, I'm currently reading um, Trigun and Dune. And as soon as I finish those, hopping into Senlin Ascends. Um, actually got it from a different library, so it's got, I can't, I'm not supposed to take this off. I can take it off. I can take it off. But um, Senlin Ascends, I've heard so many good things about it. Kind of spoke with the author a little bit on Twitter, and he, they had some really beautiful covers that me and uh, Scott from Book Invasion were talking about from Subterranean Press, and those were just gorgeous, but they were like 500 bucks for the two of them. Um, I just can't do that right now, and they were they were sold out anyway, so somebody was looking out for me <laughs> on that one. All right, and the last one is now it's time to tag people. So I picked Elise from Elise Reads and Speaks. Um, she's really cool. You should go check her out. And then Sarah Hart's Books just found her. She's been really exciting to talk to. And then Cup of Jay, we both um, read Wildcat. She didn't like it as much as I did, but it was been neat to talk back and forth with her. And then The Archive, he just recently changed his name. It used to be Graham Quigley, which is his actual name. Um, and he changed his YouTube name to The Archive. And really cool guy out of Scotland. Wanted to um, get them tagged. And if you want to check it out, I just did um, a new bookshelf. Um, I had the other bookshelf over there. And I've moved things around, kind of put a couple things up, so I'll show you. So I put up my map of London, and that was really cool. And then I got this really cool print from um, Dragon Con of Boba Fett. You can actually see uh, Han Solo in his mask there. I thought that was the coolest thing. And then, if I never explained it, the, the pins are where we've been. Um, blue is my favorite color, so that's where I've been alone. Yellow's where um, my wife has been. And then uh, pink where me and my wife have been together. Orange where we've been as a family. And then we have a great day, and so that's what the thing is. And classics up top. Um, and then favorite series, Wheel of Time. Other favorite books. And go all the way down to the floor where I've got a bunch of Warhammer stuff. So, all right. Well, that's that. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Oh,